Tonto, it begins to look as if I need a new face. Tonto, this disguise ought to do the trick. Uh, no one ever knew you, Kimosabe. Not Kimosabe, Tonto. Try to think of me as <laughs> Buck Cannon, just about one of the rip ruiners old Al Hoot that ever swapped lead with a posse. Me understand, Kimosabe. Uh, me understand, Buck. <laughs> that's right, Indian boy. Old Buck Cannon, that's my name. Your partner? Ah, uh, me call him Buck Gannon. My Indian friend tells me you're operating kind of a rest home for weary outlaws. Of course, I ain't gonna sign the registry until I get a little information. Like to see the color of your gold dust first. There she be, mister. Just as pretty as a little yellow dog. <laughs> Take a look at this one, too. Well, everything seems to be in order. Now, if you'll... What's wrong? I don't mind you studying it, but the transaction ain't settled. Like I said before, I want some information. What kind of information? Well, no. How do I know the sheriff in this here community ain't gonna put me in the lockup the first time he seed me? You got our word for it. <laughs> ain't that enough for you? No, it ain't, Sonny. I don't like to be called Sonny. I advise you to get along with Notch here, Mr. Gannon. He's my right-hand man, and the best in these parts, either with his gun or his fists. Second best, maybe. Not the best. You are, I suppose. You're the one that said it, Sonny. I eat half-baked old saddle bums like you for breakfast every morning. <laughs> maybe that's why you're so big as appearing. <laughs> Look like you got brand new right hand man. Yeah, it does look that way, doesn't it? You better go on outside and cool off, Notch. Now listen here, Whitaker. The man said outside, Sonny. Who's move? Yours. <laughs> well, now, how about that information I asked for? You don't have to worry about the sheriff. He takes orders from me. Yeah? How's that? Because his son is the apple of his eye. So you threaten to get the boy if the sheriff doesn't behave. Is that it? Right. Sheriff, you ever seen one of these before? Silver bullet. A Lone Ranger. You and I worked together once before. We can do it again. Yeah. Of course. What did you have in mind? I've replaced Notch Bryce as Whittaker's right-hand man. He'll listen to me and... Sorry to have to do this to you, Ranger. And do what, Sheriff? Expose you to Whitaker. Then why do you do it? Don't you understand? I have to. If Whitaker ever finds out, he'll have my son gunned down with no more feeling than if he'd stepped on a bug. Sure, I understand. And I also understand that your boy will remain in constant jeopardy as long as the present situation continues to exist. Well, oh, maybe so. He's alive now, and I aim to keep him that way. You really mean you turn your back on everything your badge stands for? No, Dad. No. Rod, what are you doing here? I heard somebody out here. Well, leave us alone. This gentleman and I are discussing a business matter. With a drawn gun? It's no use trying to hide the facts any longer. Dad, I heard the whole story. There's the miner's shack. What do you think, Tuttle? Me not like it, Kimasami. What's wrong? It's too quiet in there to be natural, Rod. Maybe they're all napping after that long ride from town. Perhaps. But just the same, we'd better be on the alert. Get up, boys. Hold your fire till they reach those rocks. Bring the sheriff over to the window. I want him to have a good view. Get out. Too soon. I couldn't help it. He shot me. All right, lawman, out that door. Hold it, Rod. I'll give you ten seconds to surrender, or the sheriff gets it in the back. Your dad shaking his head. 
He wants us to go on fighting. No, I couldn't do it. Nor could I. All right, Whittaker, you win. He's making a break for it. Cover him. Sheriff? Dad, you shouldn't have taken a chance like that. I had to do it, son. To try and make up for some of the other things I've done. Look, never mind me. You're gonna have your hands full over there at the shack. How many are there? Six. Come on, we'll rush them. Hold it, Rod. Seems Tano has a better idea. Me make bull from greasewood branch, make arrow from arrowweed, dip arrow in oil we bring for lamp. What are you up to, Tano? You'll see in a minute, Rod. We'll try the side window. What's going on out there? I don't know, but I don't like it. Hey, Whitaker! Fire arrows! That did it. Keep at it, tell him. All right, out the back way. There is no back way. Then we stand and fight. That's not Buck Gannon's voice. Who are you? What do you want? Never mind who I am. If all of you throw down your guns and come out with your hands high, we won't shoot. Here's my answer. <laughs> How about the rest of you guys? Let's get out of here. No, you don't. Just stay and fight. My little leader here. I'm giving the orders. You messed things up enough, Whitaker. You double pack horses. Look. They've turned on each other just like the jackals they are. Let's go. I must say, Pedro's Sunday clothes certainly look better on you than they ever did on him. Yes, it is a good fit. Uh, you not move, Kimasabe. Now, that should be good enough, Tano. It will do. Senores, allow I introduce Juan Ringo, bandido from Los Angeles. It's amazing. Tano, you've done a remarkable job. <laughs> See, si, the best she is none too good for Juan Ringo. Who is this Juan Ringo? Is there really such a person? Indeed there is, George. Tano, show Mr. Wilson that handbill. Ah. Juan Ringo was wanted in Los Angeles for murder. We caught him a couple of weeks ago and turned him over to the law. Now, if I can get Ashton to believe I'm dodging the law, he may take me into his gang. Once in his gang, I'll have a chance to find out where he's hidden the stolen guns and ammunition. It's a perfect description, e even to the scar on your cheek. Yes. Luckily, it's a printed description with no photograph. Uh, here, gun belt, Kimisami. Oh, say, uh, you won't be able to take that into Ashton, so all guns are collected at the door. Oh, that bad. Maybe someone see guns in silver bullet, then they know who you are. Uh, you're right, Tano. I've got an old gun and belt that you can use. Kimisami, if you join gang, how we keep in touch? You come into town tomorrow morning and wait outside the cafe. Two of Ashton's men have already seen you, so you'd better disguise yourself. Ah, that good idea. Here you are. Oh, thanks, George. And uh, you better take one of my horses. They might recognize yours. Ah, you're right. Tano, I know you'll take good care of Silver. I may do that, Kimisami. Buenas noches, senores. Juan Ringo, you go to paint the town. <laughs> <laughs> I suspected Wilson might send for more federal agents or hire another investigator. But I never thought of the Lone Ranger. How'd he get in touch with him? I don't know, boss, but he was there big as life. This Lone Ranger's got himself quite a reputation. I wonder if he's as clever as people say. A lot of men who wondered the same thing ended up hanging from a rope. <laughs> Crudely put, but essentially correct, Trip. It never pays to underestimate one's opponent. What are you going to do about him? If the man's such a genius, there's only one thing to do. What's that? He'll have to be killed. Well, don't look at me, Mr. Ashton. Me neither. Whoever does that hombre in will have every lawman in the West after him. You afraid of him, Mace? I'm not afraid of anybody, in or out of a mask. But I don't aim to spend the rest of my life hiding in South America. Then I'm to understand that neither of you wish this... What you mean, I give you my pistole? It's a house rule, mister. Customers have to leave their guns at the door. I never heard such foolishness. Those hombres over there, they have pistoles. They work for Mr. Ashton. Huh? Who is this Mr. Ashton? Well, he owns this cafe. Now, please, if you'll check your gun, sir, I'll be glad to serve you. 
I don't like the idea, but I have no time for arguments. Thanks. Bueno, you bring food, lots of food. I have hunger enough to eat the horns of a buffalo. You go. Who is that fellow? I never saw him before. I'm sorry, sir, but you can't sit here. Caramba, little catfishes. What can you know? Well, Mr. Ashton doesn't like for one man to hold down such a big table. Yeah. Well, if Senor Ashton want me to move from this table, you tell him to move me himself. Oh, I couldn't do that, sir. Bueno. And stop talk. Bring food! Well, the way he's acting, you'd think he owns the place. But Mr. Ashton, that gent insists on... Yeah, I heard it, Sam. I'll handle it. Thank you, Mr. Ashton. Bring him over here. I'd like to talk to him. All right. <laughs> These tortillas tied in little knots, they look funny, but they taste good. Bring more. I'm not a waiter. Huh? Why you stand here? Mr. Ashton wants to talk to you. If Senor Ashton wants to talk to me, you tell him to come here. He wants you to come to see him. Compadre, maybe your ears not hear so good. I say I stay here. And I say you're coming with me. Senor, I do not like to be grabbed. Then do as you're told. Also, I do not like the tone of your voice. I'll break you half in two. I'll get him. Leave him alone. I'm rather enjoying this. about this little misunderstanding, senor. My name's Ashton. Ah, senor Ashton. Next time you wish to talk to me, you not send muscle-bound grizzly bear to break up furniture. The furniture can be replaced. So can the uh, muscle-bound grizzly. Mace, take him into the back room and have Sam clean up this mess. Right away, boss. I'd like a word with you, senor. Uh, words will not fill an empty stomach. First, I will eat. I'll have food brought to my office, if you'll be my guest. Bueno, senor. Where I eat, makes no matter. Kimasabi, what do you do here? I'm hoping Slade will buy my horse. You not sell silver? Of course not. I think I can make Slade believe that silver's for sale and without lying to him. Hear him come now. Dan is hiding in that clump of trees near Shady Point. This man won't talk to you. What's on your mind, stranger? Well, sir, I was talking to my old friend Judge Benton last night. Said you buy and sell horses here in this ranch. He thought you might be interested in my mount. Well, the judge is a mighty respected man hereabouts. Glad to be a service to a friend of his. That's your stallion outside? Yep. How much you want for him? Well, seems to me $5,000 isn't too much to ask. $5,000? That's right. What does that horse of yours do, play the violin? No. I reckon he's the fastest horse in the territory, though. Well, stranger, how would you like to race your mount against mine? How would I like it? I'd like it fine, mister. Mighty fine. Then you'll head straight for Giant Boulder, around it, finish up back here. Well, the plan must be working. Agreed? Yep. Rusty will start you off with a count of three. What happened next? Well, if Silver wins, Slade Lewis will want to buy him. The Lone Ranger decided to set the price so high that Slade will have to resort to the wrestler's gold dust to make the purchase. Uh, keep us how they follow whoever Slade Lewis sent to hideout cabin for gold dust. Maybe find old Pete Travis. Well, that's the way we hope it'll work out. Hey, yeah, mister. Now do you think $5,000 is too much for him? No. Rusty. Yes, boss. 
Ride out the cabin until Thursday and eat $5,000 in gold dust. Whatever you say, boss. You'll have your money in less than an hour. You can wait here, provided you don't interfere with anybody's work. Well, I'll make myself scarce. Come on, Stallion. How come you're gonna pay him? I figured you'd just plug him and take the horse. Didn't you hear him say he's a friend of Judge Benton's? Can't afford to have the judge on our necks. You stay here, Silver. I'll go the rest of the way on foot. I wish Slade would divvy up this gold dust and let us scatter. I've had about all I can stand of old Pete. Yeah. Who are you? There's no time for explanations. You'll just have to trust me. Anybody that gets me out of here is my friend for life. I'll do what I can. But there's two out there in the front room. There's only one of you. Yes, I know. It'll help distract their attention if you raise a commotion. Mister, just watch me. There. That ought to be about $5,000 worth. What do you want, Travis? Some water. I'm thirsty. Get it for him, will you? Let me see if you got anything in your hands. All right, there it is. Who are you? Yeah! Who you pay for that? You can't thank us. Who caused that for commotion, mister? Excellent. You. Get his gun. It'll be a pleasure. Not so fast, Uncle Pete. I didn't hear you ride up. Well, you were meant to. We left the horses back a piece. We? Blackie and me. And also a couple of friends of yours. Take a look. How about it, stranger? Shall I blast him, or are you going to hand over your gun? Let's have him, mister. You'd need this map. So that's why Crowell was so interested in Mason's gun belt. Well, what are we waiting for? Covering the money is one thing, Sheriff. But to put Holt and Miller back behind bars again is another. We've got to catch them with the stolen money. Sheriff, can you get me some clothes? Something that an Easterner would wear? Mm, I guess so. What are you planning? I want Crowell or his boys to get this map back again. And when they get it, we're going to be right behind them. Well, these clothes the Sheriff gave us seem to fit you perfectly. Well, young man. Do you have any souvenirs of the West I might purchase? Some authentic Western guns, for example? <laughs> How do I sound, Dan? It's like you just stepped off a stage from the East. It's a fine disguise. Let's hope it fools Miller and Holt when the sheriff and I go into our act. You better give me that false bullet. There it is, sir. And here's Mason's gun and gun belt. Thanks, Dan. I put your regular clothes in Victor's saddlebag. We'd better get on to town. I told the sheriff we'd meet him in front of the hotel in an hour. I hope this plan of yours works out all right, sir. Don't worry, Dan. I won't take any unnecessary chances. After all, I wouldn't want to get these spectacles broken now, would I? Let's go. Sheriff! I looked over this gun, and it's only worth $20. No more, no less. Well, that's too bad. My friend wants a little more than that. Incidentally, Sheriff, he ought to be more careful about the cartridges he intends to use. Someone might think the mechanism is faulty if he tries to shoot this bullet. <laughs> it's a dud, you know. Yeah, well, I'll uh, tell him about it. Sheriff, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to keep this as a souvenir of the West. Well, you're welcome to it. How long are you going to be in town? Oh, not very long. Uh, I've rented a horse. I think I'll ride around a bit and enjoy the scenery. Good day, Sheriff. Mm -hmm. Good day. Get Crowell. Tell him what happened. I'll get the horses and we'll follow him. Isn't this awfully dangerous, sir? It's the only way, Dan. I have to do this alone. Now, you join the sheriff and do exactly as we've planned. Right. If he stayed on the trail while we took the shortcut, he should be here by now. Wait! Just shut up! Here he comes. Get off that horse! What's going on here? Get off that horse! Come on. 
can't say. Why, why, you can't do a thing like that. Where's that bullet you were talking about? Uh, bullet? Yeah. The one you took from the gun. The one you were checking for the sheriff's friend. Where is it? Oh, uh, uh, the bullet. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. You mean uh, this one? Why, you... Uh, just a moment. You're losing the spur. Why, you... Take it easy, Dad. The Ranger's got to lose. It's part of the plan. I know. Let's go. What about him? Uh, forget him. He can't identify us. Lead the way, Hope. Come on. We'll get that money. Yeah. All right, Dan, you go after Victor. I'll join the Lone Ranger. This time we know where those three are heading. Buenos dias, senor. You are awake. You sleep late, eh? <laughs> What's the matter, Tonto? Don't you recognize me? Kimo sabe. That good disguise. I put it on last night while you were sleeping. Wearing my regular clothes underneath. Do you feel better today? Much better, Tonto. After breakfast, I want to pay a visit to the bank that was robbed yesterday. I want to talk with someone that got a close look at the man who impersonated me. You think him same man who shoot you? Yes, it seems likely, Tano. Plenty bad luck Midnight Rider happened to be in Canyon the same time you come through. Maybe it wasn't a matter of luck. Remember that this canyon is the only isolated spot around here for a good campsite. Now, if the Midnight Rider knew we were coming to Rock Point... But how him know that, Kimasebi? Don't forget that Marshal Collins offered to send a wire to Sheriff McClellan. Ah, then you think Sheriff McClellan friend of Midnight Rider? No, Tano, I didn't say that. I'm sure there's a dozen different ways that that wire might have fallen into the wrong hands. Uh, there are many questions me like to ask Midnight Rider. I have a few questions I want to ask him myself when I find him. Yes, sir, I'll be with you in just a minute. Take your time, partner. Barney, what are you doing here in town? Don't get hysterical, Delroy. Come on, write something. You're supposed to be a customer. I just wanted to find out what happened in town after the holdup yesterday. Did I look like the Lone Ranger? Sure, enough to fool everyone who saw you. Now, I take it you didn't have any trouble out at the canyon. I rode in about 2.30 and I shot him through the head. Did you bury him in the canyon? I didn't bury him anywhere. He rolled clear to the bottom of the canyon after I shot him. I didn't have time. You mean you're not even sure he's dead? Of course he's dead. Are you brainless idiot? Well, what are you waiting for? Go on, ride back there to the canyon now. If you find the masked man, bury him. Body. The masked man isn't there. And heaven help you. Come in. Uh, buenos dias, senor. Uh, you are uh, senor Niles, the president of the bank? Yes, sir, I am. Uh, the man who gives out the money, he said you were in. Uh, senor, I do not like to intrude, but I'd like to speak with you for a moment about the robbery yesterday. Come in, please. Uh, si, si, senor. Sit down. Uh, gracias, gracias. Senor, when I hear of this terrible thing, I say to myself, maybe this is the man who makes so much trouble for me. You were robbed, too? Uh, si, senor. Uh, something very precious. Uh, this uh, outlaw, you get a good look at him? Yes, I did. Uh, you tell Pancho what he looked like? Well, he was a tall man, dark-haired, wore a light Stetson and a mask. Rode a white horse called Silver. I guess everybody in town knows whose description that fits. The Lone Ranger. Uh, is it possible you make a mistake, senor? I don't think so. I know it sounds incredible, but frankly, I was so stunned, I didn't recognize him myself immediately. It was John Delroy who identified him first. Uh, who is this Delroy? He's one of the telegraph operators here in town. I see. The man who gets the wires the moment they come in, see? Yes, that's right. Bueno, I will remember. I'm sorry to take up so much of your time. I only hope I've been able to help you. Uh, you have indeed. Adios. You hold it right there, mister. Mr. Delroy, what is this? I took the liberty of sending your cashier for the sheriff, Mr. Niles. You've done what? I have reason to believe this man may be the robber. Are you sure? We collided outside my office. Some of the brown makeup he's using on his face and hands rubbed off on me. When the sheriff arrives, I think we better have that makeup removed, Mr. Niles. 
Well, this man is about the same height as the robber. Nobody's attending your bank, sir. Hadn't you better get out there and wait for the sheriff? I'll keep our mysterious friend covered. All right, sit down. No, mister, am I right in thinking you may be the Lone Ranger? Well, it doesn't make too much difference. I'll have to kill you anyway. If you are the Lone Ranger, all my troubles are over. If you're not, I'll just have to keep on looking. You'll be shot while trying to escape. You're a clever man, Delroy. I should have suspected the telegraph operator. But you made two bad mistakes. And yeah, what were they? First was taking in a partner. Partner? That's right. You're not the Midnight Rider. You're too small to have impersonated me. Well, that's a good point. I've been thinking of a saying. There's no honor among thieves. You and your partner have stripped this town of a fortune. Are you sure that money is safe, Delroy? You said there were two mistakes, mister. What's the second? The second was even more stupid. You shouldn't turn your back to a rear door. No, it won't do. Hey, oh. Good work, Carlo. You may see this fellow bump into you, then follow you into bank. You may go around back, listen to that door. What we do now? Wait for Sheriff, tell him what happened here? I doubt whether the Sheriff would take our word against Delroy's without proof. But unless I'm mistaken, we'll have that proof in a couple of hours. Well, I won't need this disguise anymore. You know Marlon Baker. Wingate and his men rode out of town about ten minutes ago. We'll give them time to get a little further away, and then it'll be our turn to go into action. And what's your plan, Kimisemi? To get Wingate alone for just five minutes. But how we do that? Him always keep men on guard. I'm counting on the colonel to distract their attention by performing a few feats of magic. Yeah, but what you gonna do with Wingate even if you do capture him, boy? How you gonna get him out of the city past the guards? By creating a diversion that'll draw the men away from the posts. And I think I know a way to do it. Two men come this way. Hey, I've been telling Tex here about all them fancy tricks I saw your clowns do at that show last month. He thinks I'm a liar. Why, that's nonsense, boy. Anything your friend tells you here about my two clowns, absolutely true. Why, they're the best in their field. That's what I told him. Hey, I tell you what. Have them do that stunt where they stand on each other's heads. That ought to convince them. Uh, well, I'd, uh, I'd like to, fellas, but uh, you see, we give no preview performances. You'll have to wait till the show this evening. What do you mean, I'll have to wait? When I said now, I meant now. <laughs> well, certainly, I'd be delighted. Uh, you feel up to it, boys? <laughs> How are you, Kiki? Well, there we are. Pretty good, huh? Not bad. Well, what about the finish to the act? Uh, the finish? The, the finish? Uh, yeah, the, the tumbling, boys. <laughs> you know the tumbling? Wait a minute. If you have to tell them what to do, there must be something wrong here. Well, they have many finishes to their act. Not to this one. I've seen it four times. Tex, keep them covered. I think this old windbag's trying to pull a double cross. I want to take a look at those two horses. They weren't part of the act before. Me glad we not have to do more tricks, Kimisabi. Plenty dangerous. Make head feel flat on top. I will work much safer. I work much safer, Tuttle. That trick was tame compared with the trouble we're headed for now. Come on. We'll let the boss have a little talk with all three of them. Up. Mr. Carlson, those men who broke into your place today, they were after a fortune, a hidden fortune buried underneath your house. A hidden fortune? A hundred thousand dollars that was stolen from the Glenville Bank ten years ago. Now hold on, I don't know what you're getting at, mister, but this house hasn't been here for ten years. I built it myself six years ago. I know, but you built it over the spot where the money was buried. Man who buried it been in prison, him come back today and find your house here. That's right. 
and he's coming back again in a very short while with a friend you mean they're coming here to get the money yes only the criminals know exactly where it is we'll have to let them dig it up then capture them with the evidence well i don't know what to think if you leave it to us my friend and i can handle the situation i'd like you to ride into town and get the sheriff well what are you going to do i'm going to stay here and meet these men when they arrive but i'll be disguised as you Tonto will be hidden outside where he can watch what goes on. When the crooks get their hands on the money, he'll move in. It sounds kind of risky for you. I don't mind taking risks if it helps rid the West of men like Ross Mason. Mister, I may be taking a chance, but I'm going to play along with you. I think you're on the level. Thanks, Mr. Carlson. Now, if I may borrow some clothes? Why, certainly. Tonto, get my saddlebags. In here. Who wants him? May we come in? We've lost our way. Well, certainly. My name's Smith. We'd like to get directions to Glenville. Saw your name in the mailbox. Go about a mile down the road and turn right. It'll take you right into Glenville. Well, thanks very much, but we're all so tired and hungry. Would it be asking too much of your wife to fix us a bite to eat? We'd be glad to pay. I'm sorry. Mrs. Carlson isn't in. She's gone for the night. Well, that makes things a lot easier. Suppose you get over in that chair and sit down. What is this? Just do what you're told. Bring in the tools, Dave, and some rope to tie this bird up. We're going to do a little excavating, Mr. Carlson, right in your front room. I don't understand. You will. Hey, coming, Ross. Now we're getting there. Now you take it a while. All right. I think I hit something. Yep, here it is. There she is, Dave. A hundred thousand in cold cash. Gosh. Let's get out of here. We want a real good fire. Spread some of that kerosene around. Stand still, Indian. Drop that gun. And the belt. Hurry. You make big mistake. No, you're the one that made the mistake. I knew you weren't to be trusted. You are that masked man. It's a good thing I came back when I did. Now get in the house. Frank! What? I'll take this. Don't move either one of you. Mrs. Carlson, I assume. Why, yes, I am. Hey, Ross. This Indian. He's the one we threw at the hotel. Yeah, you're right. He must have been snooping around outside, heard what we said. Well, now, isn't this real nice? We've got all three witnesses together. Frank, Martha, and the engine. Tie him up, Dave. Get over there, both of you. All right, sit down. Sorry to do it this way, friends. But I wouldn't want the coroner to find you'd been shot to death.
They're tied good enough. Come on, Dave, bring that money. Ross, the money! Quick, put this fire up! Keep your hands up, both of you. Nice work, Tonto. Are you all right, Mrs. Carlson? Yes, I'm all right. That must be your husband now with the sheriff. Uh, oh, uh, I heard you experienced a rather frightful mishap arriving in, in Trico City. Yes, it was terrible. But a masked man helped me. In fact, his Indian friend thinks he's located the outlaw's hideout near the bank. Their hideout? Well, uh, perhaps we should notify the sheriff. Well, I think the masked man would do so if he thought it necessary. I feel a little uneasy over that pair. They sound like outlaws themselves. Oh, no, Professor, they're good. Why, why, they're no more outlaws than, than you. Aren't they, Miss Cartwright? Why, why, you're not Professor Gordon, you're... <clears throat> a lot of good it will do you now that you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto silently examined the abandoned house. Certainly seems like a deserted house, Tom. Possibly he came through here to cover his tracks. Kimasabi. Soon they left the candle burning. Go up and close the panel. We'll surprise them. All right, reach. Him man me trail from jail. Him friend of Glick. Keep him covered, amigo, while I see where this tunnel goes. Just as I think, this tunnel go beneath the bank. Already this gringo have saw his way through the floor into the bank. Are you the one who helped Glick try to kidnap Miss Cartwright? I don't know anybody by the name of Glick. I think you lie. I think also you work for someone else besides Senor Glick. I don't know what you're talking about. Take him to the sheriff. I will remain here in case another one show up. He's here, my friend. I'm glad to see you, Professor. Drop your guns, both of you. Or Miss Cartwright gets a bullet in the head. Collect the firearms. He's sure a nosy Mexican. His curiosity will be short-lived. For the time being, Mr. Devlin, tie them up. Get over on the floor. You, Indian, get over there. Two bags of gold dust and plenty more where they came from. That blasting powder at the hinges of the vault door sure did the trick. I used so little that Hardy made a sound. Put them in the buckboard, Mr. Devlin. You will not get away with it, senor professor. You think not, my friend? Then perhaps you don't know how carefully I have planned. There are many things that you have overlooked. Your accomplice, Gleek, for one. He is in jail. Sooner or later, he may talk. Stay where you are, Indian. Now, as for Mr. Glick, he's a minor problem. Tomorrow, when the robbery is discovered, the entire town will flock over to the bank. In the meantime, I'll slip quietly over to the jail. When the sheriff returns, he'll find Glick dead shot from the window of his prison cell. What about this tunnel? They will surely find it. And if they do, they'll find the bodies of a Mexican and an Indian. To all appearances, double-crossed by the rest of the gang. Two good reasons to throw the sheriff off my trail. What you gonna do about Miss Cordwright? She'll be taken down to the river and drowned. Her body will be weighted with stones. So, you will stop at nothing, eh, senor? Absolutely nothing. You have another accomplice. If uh, he is caught... I have overlooked nothing. I'll pick up the rest of the gold. That'll be fine, Mr. Devlin. Devlin, look out! <laughs> Tom, 
Try Miss Cordwright, Tonto. Then we'll see about Devlin. Put him in the back cell. If you need more evidence, Sheriff, I'm sure Devlin will be glad to provide it. It should be enough to jail a professor for years. Why are we leave so quick, Kim Asami? Crazy Joe is not a harmless eccentric. There were footprints leading to a hiding place behind that closet. Then why are we not looking hiding place? I want to make sure of things before we make our move. Oh, man who grabbed little fish carried big fish away. Yes. Recently, the loot from several robberies has disappeared into thin air, like the jewels that Granville was trying to recover. It's possible that someone has organized the receiving of stolen goods on a large scale. Mm, that's plenty bad. What we do? Well, I have a plan that involves using the clothes I wore to capture the Guthrie gang. Senor Lope de Varga, the celebrated Spanish authority on the supernatural, is coming to Crooked Fork to investigate the ghost. Uh, me help with disguise. I'd rather you took Granville's body into town. After Senor de Varga talks to the deputy sheriff, he'll check in at the hotel. I'll meet you there. Me understand. Hola. Is there no one here? Are you looking for me? If you are the sheriff. Yes, I'm acting sheriff. I have come here to see this ghost I am hearing about. Huh? I have come to offer my services. Your services? Have you not heard of Lope de Varga? In Spain, I am considered the great authority on supernatural manifestations. I believe what you call in this country a ghost catcher. Sit down, mister. I don't believe in ghosts. But you'd better be careful. Last night, some man went out to Coyote Pass. About an hour ago, an engine brought him back. Dead. No. He was found with an arrow on his back, and no trace of footsteps anywhere around. Ah, magnifico. A true poltergeist. A polter? A polter what? An evil spirit, one who wishes harm to the living. I don't know about that, but I've got a posse out looking for the murderer. Yeah. Uh, they will never find him. Then you think it really was a ghost? Quien sabe. Tonight, I will go to the canyon and find out. Could I obtain from you a guide? Don't be a fool, mister. Nobody will go near the place. But you say you do not believe in ghosts. I don't. But say, if you'll promise to keep it a secret, I'll go with you. Oh, that will be most kind. But uh, why keep it a secret? If folks thought I was taking this spook seriously, I'd be laughed right out of office. Very well, Senor Sheriff. But we must be at this place before midnight. I will rent a horse from the stable and meet you here about uh, what time? Eleven o'clock ought to do it. Muy bien. Meanwhile, if you wish me, I will be at the hotel. Many thanks, Senor. Adios. Hey, Maker, come in here. What you want, boss? I'm sending somebody out to the canyon tonight. Take care of him. Thought we was laying low. This fellow's a professional ghost catcher. We got to get rid of him. With the Lone Ranger snooping around? We'll have to risk it. If Joe said all those fool traps he's got lined up, nobody will be able to sneak close to the shack. We'll be out around midnight. All right. Flack offered to go with me himself. When you brought Granville in, did you tell anyone that there were no footprints near the body? I may not say anything about prints. Yet Flack said there were no tracks by the body. That means he knew Granville was dead before you brought his body in. But he did nothing about it. Uh, that sounds like him maybe mixed up with crooks. It certainly does. If him crook Kimasami, what kind of crook? There have been no holdups or robberies in this part of country. Do you know what a fence is? Uh, a fence something men build around fields. That's one kind of fence. Another kind is one who buys stolen goods. Granville was on the trail of the Kansas City jewels when he was killed. Fence men have headquarters in Canyon and use ghosts to scare people away? That's quite possible. But we need proof, Kimasami. That's why I'm going there. Flack may be trying to kill you. I'm going to arrange a little surprise for Senor Flack. 
I want you to go out there now while it's still daylight. Find a good hiding place and keep your eye on Crazy Joe's shack. Uh, when you come to Canyon? At midnight. I'll meet you then. Uh. The Lone Ranger. 